In my previous video, I tried Regatta OS for the second time because I couldn't use it to do benchmarking during my first time. And beside Regatta OS, Blend OS was another distribution I couldn't do benchmarking on. So in this video, let's try Blend OS again to see if they fix all the issues I've encountered during the first time. And before that, this video is sponsored by Brilliant. Brilliant is where you learn by doing. With thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI, Brilliant adopts a first principle approach to foster comprehensive understanding from fundamental level. Each lesson integrates hands-on problem-solving activities, which are demonstrated to be six times more impactful than passive learning through lectures. Moreover, Brilliant's content is carefully prepared by an experienced team of educators, researchers, and industry professionals from prestigious institutions such as MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft, and Google. Emphasizing critical thinking development through problem solving rather than mindless memorization, Brilliant nurtures not only subject-specific expertise, but also enhances cognitive abilities. By dedicating a few minutes daily to engaging with its enjoyable lessons, Brilliant empowers individuals to accumulate knowledge incrementally, fostering both personal and professional growth. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash mumblinghugo or click on the link in the description. You will also get 20% off for annual premium subscription. Last time I tried Blend OS, I wasn't able to make the system boot up after a system installation for the Plasma version. So again, I download the Plasma version to see if they have fixed the boot up issue. And also, the first issue I encountered last time was that I could not boot up the live CD using Ventoy. But this time, I see them mentioning in their wiki that users should not use Rufus, but Ventoy should work. So I put the Blend OS ISO file in the Ventoy again to see if it actually works. The live CD boot up without any issue with Ventoy. Now it's time to install the system. In order to do so, we need to connect to the internet. The start button becomes clickable after the internet connection. Let's start. It has the user creation screen inbuilt with the installation process. Let's erase the whole disk. The installation has started. Let's wait for it to finish. The next issue I had last time was that the first time boot up was never able to finish after the first time installation. I tried this with GNOME and Plasma version. Neither of them worked. So let's see if the first time boot up this time can work. Okay, installation is done. Let's reboot and see. Nice, no more freezing during the first time reboot. Let's enter the system. The welcome program popped up after I logged in. I also remember last time the system froze during this process. Let's give it a try. In the container setting, there is one page called Linux containers, another one called Android apps, and finally system, which means there are three categories of applications I can install on this system. Let's continue the system setup. They also have a web app store if those applications were not enough for you. And I don't see any freeze happening during the system setup. And the other thing I noticed is that under the Android apps page inside the Blend OS setting, I see it detecting the NVIDIA GPU. So I'm gonna check if the NVIDIA proprietary driver has installed out of the box. I don't see the NVIDIA X settings application, 
but the NVIDIA SMI command was able to print out the correct information of my GPU. So I guess the proprietary driver has already been installed. This is a good news for me as a gamer because I don't have to worry about NVIDIA driver and the system doesn't freeze because of that. The next thing I want to check is the Bluetooth adapter because it is not always working out of the box for all the distributions I try in this channel. I'm gonna try to connect the Logitech keyboard and mouse to it. All right, the Bluetooth adapter was working and I was able to connect my mouse to it, but the system froze right after it. I cannot use my mouse to move the cursor or using the touchpad. The keyboard on my laptop also doesn't respond. It's time to force the system to shut down for the first time by holding the power button. After reboot, the system was able to remember the Bluetooth device I connected previously. Now I can use the mouse to move the cursor in the login screen. It's time to connect the keyboard using Bluetooth. The system didn't freeze this time after a new connection. Now let's move on to the input method. Let me add Chinese pinyin method. To do that, it seems I need to install either FCITX or iBus. It's time to search the Blend OS wiki. But before that, I just realized the Wi-Fi connection was not carried over from the installation process. So let me see if the system needs an update first. After a quick browse, I couldn't find any settings that directly check the system update. So I'm gonna use the command provided by Blend OS team to check the system update. After reading their wiki for a bit, it seems that system update is designed to be triggered automatically, not manually. So I'm not gonna do that right now. And continue with the input method. There is no dedicated wiki page to set up input method for Blend OS. So I follow the Arch wiki instead to install all the FCITX RIME required packages. There are several commands to handle the software packages on this system. User, system, and BPKG. And because FCITX should be started on the system level, I install it using the system command. The funny thing is that the system command doesn't have search subcommand. So I'm guessing all the available packages on Arch will be available using system, which is why they didn't implement search function. And system install FCITX5 seems to be working now. Let's wait for it to finish. but it's still not working. Now I think the missing step is to set up the environment variables for FCITX. Last time I was not able to install and use Emacs. I'm gonna use the system command to install Emacs this time again to see what happens. Interesting thing happened. During the installation of Emacs, I found out the rhyme input method starts to work inside Firefox now. I can type Chinese characters. So I guess the input method just takes some time to start working on this system compared to others. Ironically, after the input method starts to work, the Emacs installation failed. It seems there's still some issues on my Rhyme installation. It says dependency circle was detected. So let me see if I can remove some package and fix it. All right, it seems there was a conflict file. After I delete that file, I can install Emacs properly. Then I add the FCITX variables into the ETC environment using Emacs and reboot the system. Now I can type Chinese characters inside all the applications.
with Bluetooth and input method out of the way, it's time to do gaming. First game I need to run is Assassin's Creed Origins on Steam. To do that, I'm gonna create a new Ubuntu container and install Steam and Mango Hut inside. And I'm using the Blend OS setting to create a container. Let's try this. I can see NVIDIA driver support is being installed automatically. I can't seem to find the Steam package inside the Ubuntu container. First, I need to enable the i386 architecture inside the Docker. Then, I need to add the repository, but the add apt repository command is not found. So, I need to install the software properties common package to enable that command. And after the apt update, I can install Steam. And the Steam icon is available after the installation. Let me try to set up the game and see if it works. The game setup was pretty painless. I treat the Steam as a native application and I see no issue enabling the compatibility and reading the game from the external USB drive. Now, the Ubisoft Connect is stuck at looking for patches. And after searching the internet, it looks like the issue is caused by the network setup. I may need to disable the IPv6 either from the system setting or the container. Let me try to solve that. After I disabling the IPv6 from the network section inside the system setting, I can see the Ubisoft Connect was able to update itself and show up the login screen. Alright, the game has started with the Mongo Hut working and inside the graphics section, it is picking up the correct GPU adapter. Which means, as long as you're familiar with the concept of Dockers and this system, you can treat all the applications inside containers as native applications. Let's start the benchmarks. Alright, looks like the Mango Hut inside container does not output its file into the host user folder. After I explicitly set the output folder of Mango Hut to my home folder, I can see the file now. I got 27.1 as 0.1% low, 40.2 as 1% low, and 71.6 as average. It's time to move on to Red Dead Redemption 2 because I use Bottles to run this game and the Bottles developer are recommending the Flatpak version so I'm gonna use Flatpak to install Bottles The good thing about Blend OS is that Flatpak is installed and configured properly out of the box All I need to do is to install the applications I'm also gonna install one additional copy of Mango Hut and to see if I can use the Flatpak Mango Hut on top of Flatpak Bottles and see if there will be any conflict with the Mongo Hut inside a container. The Red Dead Redemption 2 started properly with Flatpak everything. Now it's time to run benchmarks. The RDR2 gave me 22.1 0.1% low, 34.9 1% low, and 52 average. Let's compare these numbers with other immutable systems. I can see that the Nix OS number is not as accurate because I remember during the last time I recorded the Nix OS video, I had to let the laptop cool down for each of the desktop environments to compare with each other. So the Nix OS numbers here are way better than the other two distributions. We can see Blend OS is actually on par with Bazite OS depending on the games. And after I copy the numbers to compare with other Arch-based Linux, I can see Blend OS is actually performing averagely in Assassin's Creed Origins compared to other Arch-based Linux. And it ranked number one in RDR2. It has the best 1% low number. 0.1% and average numbers are also pretty good. 
Because the heat on laptop can influence the number quite a bit, I have decided to give it a try to run all the gaming benchmarks on my desktop PC using different Linux distributions. So if you want to see more accurate data, make sure to subscribe. Finally, I see Blend OS is trying to do what NixOS can do, swapping between desktop environments. The best thing about NixOS is that after switching to another desktop environment, there will be no trace of the previous environment being ever installed. So I'm gonna try to swap to GNOME now on Blend OS and see if I can see any trace from KDE Plasma. Looks like it has some issue acquiring the system lock. Let me reboot the system and try again. On the Blend OS wiki, it says if you're stuck at acquiring system lock, it means there is backend update going on. But by using the command mentioned in the wiki, I can see there's nothing going on in the background. So I'm not sure what's happening here. Hmm, after waiting for a bit, it looks like there's some Python issue connecting to the internet. I'm not sure which URL it is trying to open, but I do seem to have internet connection right now. So I'm not gonna do the desktop swapping in this video. The final thing I want to test is the Android apps mentioned in the Blend OS settings. I want to see if I can run some basic games in it. Hmm, after I grant all the access in the Aurora store, I cannot proceed with the next button. I'm not sure if there's something I missed in this setup. Now, let me try the F-Droid. It looks like the emulator is working with some simple game installed from F-Droid. And I'm gonna stop testing on this distribution now. It looks like overall Blend OS has fixed a lot of issues since last time I checked it out. But it still has some rough edges with all the features they are providing. Especially on the system track command and the emulator with the Aurora store. But other than those, everything works pretty smoothly. I think it is mature enough for people to start using it as a daily driver now. And I do like the feature that I get to choose all the applications from whichever Linux distributions repository because it gives the user more freedom when using Linux. So that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.